Welcome to part three of this video series. I'm really glad that most of you have enjoyed these videos I did interviewing Emily Jones, and I want to give a special thanks to Ronnie Jones, Emily Jones' dad, who's been sharing my videos in his newsletters. Thanks, Ronnie, and I really enjoyed celebrating Rosh Hashanah with you back in 2019. So thank you, everybody, for your support. And here I introduce part three of the video, where we switch gears and we talk about modern Christian persecution happening in Mexico today. So, I hope you learn a lot from this video. So now for the next part of the video, we're going to be talking about Mexico today. What are the greatest spiritual needs? Um, some people are unaware, honestly, and I was once, about there is growing violence against Christians in Mexico today that probably hasn't been there since the 1920s. So Emily and I took some time to research um, from Open Doors uh, which is a Christian organization which focuses on the persecuted church. And every year they do a world watch list of the 50 countries where Christians are persecuted the most. Mexico is in that list of 50, and it has risen up in the numbers in recent years, which means it's getting harder for Christians in parts of the country. So, Emily, let's talk about w what is the forms of persecution in Mexico today. Yeah, so some of the forms of persecution that are there um, right now is in the states that have a lot of drug cartels, mm -hmm. that they're beginning to target Christians because of the... Um, Christian leaders who are being outspoken against the drug cartels, their violence, the terror they inflict mm -hmm. on the people, their corruption of politics. A lot of uh, both Catholic priests as well as Protestants uh, pastors in Mexico have been taking a stand and denouncing what the cartels are doing. Also, the churches in Mexico do drug rehab programs um, because the cartels will get people addicted to drugs because all they care about is addicts mean money. So churches in Mexico do drug rehab programs to get people clean and saved and taken off the drug addictions. And the cartels, they don't like that, do they? And so what's been happening is some of the cartels in Mexico have been doing arson attacks on churches who do drug rehab programs to try to shut them up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some pastors in the last decade, so since 2010, have actually been getting murdered by cartel hitmen. Yeah, that's so heavy because, you know, in the part of Mexico that I live in, we didn't really hear a lot about that in particular. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely a new thing for me to hear about all of this, especially in those states. And that's, yeah, it's a heavy thing. And, you know, growing up in the state of Oaxaca, you always heard about some of the problems that would happen in our state mm -hmm. would be in the mountains where there was more Catholicism. And yeah. When people began to be Christians. Protestant. More, yeah, Protestant, like, they would face persecution. They'd get thrown out of their towns. Beat um, up. Threatened with death. Like, we have friends that work in those areas um, who would tell us stories about just the persecution that they would face, which you forget is actually happening, like, in your backyard. Yeah. And also in the Chiapas region, which is, um, which borders Guatemala. That part of Mexico also is pretty hardcore, where some of the people are hardcore, like Catholics, or even form some Aztec folklore with it, mm -hmm. I read. Mm -hmm. And they've even physically attacked uh, Protestant uh, missionaries, Protestant evangelists that try to evangelize to them. Yeah. They physically will beat them up wow. in Chiapas. So now that we address, you know, there is a problem, a growing problem of persecution of Christians in parts of Mexico. What are the answers to that, Emily? What do you see being from Mexico? Well, this is something, I guess, because some of these issues are new, because it's not necessarily in my part of Mexico that... But as a nation I've as a whole, of, yeah. Is, I think, well, the thing I've done for a long time is, 
is praying for Mexico that yes. the hold that the cartels have would be broken. Yes. Um, that they would come to Christ. Yes. That they would repent and um, turn from what they're doing. There's a lot of corruption, um, as in so many nations. There's corruption there. And so praying that those in leadership would refuse to be corrupt. Taking bribes. Yeah, and that they would have the welfare of the people in mind. But ultimately, like, we know that only the gospel is going to change. Only the gospel will change. So we pray that, that people would come to Christ in Mexico as a nation. Um, and that people would we, would, we would take our job seriously as Christians and mm-hmm. live out the gospel and proclaim the gospel. What would be one of the most useful ways, effective ways for the church in trying to reach out to the drug cartels to preach the gospel to them? Joseph, you asked some hard questions. It, these are deep questions. I don't know if I'm smart enough to answer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know, it's kind of hard to answer because I haven't been in that situation. Right. As like someone that is facing cartels. Mm-hmm. But I would think the first thing is starting out with prayer. Yes. And asking God for wisdom on how you would yeah, interact with them. Yeah. And asking God for courage um, and also for his protection, like no matter where the persecution is coming from in any part of the world, asking that God would protect you as you live in that environment. Amen. And I was also things to also talk about for prayer for Mexico is uh, there's a lot of human trafficking that's been going on in the last few decades, especially um Central American migrants that come from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras who try to cross through Mexico to the U.S. A lot of times, these cartels and our criminal groups just grab them up and force them into sex trafficking. In Mexico, I've read so much about this. And these people are vulnerable to Central American migrants because, um, you know, no one's going to claim them. They're just forgettable faces yeah. when they go through Mexico, and they have no legal protection. And... That's another thing to pray about. That's been so rampant now in Mexico. And then we're also talking about, you know, corruption. An, an example that happened recently. Um, so last December 2020, a, the former defense minister of Mexico, General Salvador Sinfuegos, who is the defense minister of Mexico from about 2012 to 2019, was actually arrested at LAX wow. when he was visiting family. Mm-hmm. And there was a a lot of evidence that he, as defense minister, was taking bribes from drug cartels and giving them military protection. And then he was arrested at LAX when he was visiting family here and was going to be put on trial. And believe it or not, the Mexican government demanded that he be brought back to the U.S. or we're going to kick out all DEA agents. To me, that's a very disappointing thing to know of how high the corruption has gone in Mexico that they're willing to not face the Mexican government doesn't want any of that exposed and they'll like go to great lengths to cover up to the threat we're going to you know sever all security relationship with wow. the United States if you put them on trial mm-hmm. and expose any of the rest of us wow. for being involved in drug trafficking that's so blatantly corrupt and another thing I was going to bring up, I, uh, have you ever read about the 1920s and the whole Cristeros thing in Mexico? No, I don't think so. So uh, that's another thing we'll talk about. Um, th- Mexico really hasn't gone through severe like Christian persecution since the 1920s. And there was a time when um, the Mexican president at the time, Plutarco Elias Callas, was actually, after the Mexican Revolution wanted to secularize Mexico. He wanted to create a whole new Mexican society and did not like how the Catholic Church owned a lot of land Mm -hmm. in Mexico property and had so much control over the education system. So what happened was Plutarco Callas and his government um, decided to shut down all the churches and eliminate the church from public life. He... and, And... they got to the point where the, um, the church did not want to obey those orders, and some priests ended up being executed by firing squad by the Mexican government. And what ended up happening from 1926 to 1929 is some of the Catholic 
the Catholics of Mexico formed insurgents groups and started fighting against the Mexican government. And there's photos of the Mexican government hanging priests by telephone poles with a noose and leaving them out in the public. And that went on from 1926 to 29. Um, 29, the Mexican government signed a ceasefire with the Catholic Church and restored relations and allowed churches and all that freedom of religion again. But they, the Mexican government in the 20s tried to make a, an atheist state wow. in Mexico in the 1924 to 29, and it failed, but it was violent. Wow. After that, there was many decades up until now where the church was kind of just left alone. Yeah. That's some history for Mexico there. Yeah, thanks for that. Yes. So, Emily, uh, what are the... What, how should we, from the United States, pray for Mexico? And if someone wants to get involved with some of these problems we addressed? Yes, these are deep questions. <laughs> I feel like it's the question, how to solve world peace now? <laughs> um, well, I think we kind of talked about We it need to pray, time. obviously. Yeah, we need to pray. Um, I think we need to pray that God would intervene. I'd also like to ask, and also maybe bring more awareness to it to other people at our church. Yeah, I think, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to think, like, I think we need to be in prayer Mm -hmm. more all around. I think we need, I think for, we want things to change in other nations, Mm -hmm. um, just as we want things to change in our own nation. Right. But... And it starts with each one of us. Like, each one of us needs to be spending time with God, spending time in his word, spending time in prayer. Yes. Um, and as we do that, I know that God will give us wisdom on how to proceed more. Um, and, like, we've already talked about, the thing that's really going to bring about change in our own nation's troubles and the troubles in Mexico yeah. is going to be the gospel and yes. the power of God. So I would encourage all of us to really spend time seeking God and Mm -hmm. being in his word, knowing the truth. Yes. um, So that we don't get sidetracked by all these different things. Yeah. The main thing stays the main thing. Is spreading the gospel. Yeah. And that we begin to do that here. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Mexico that they would continue to do that faithfully. Yes. Um, That the church would be unified. I think that's a huge thing. Yes. Um, As you're praying for Mexico, that you would pray that the church in Mexico at large, would be unified with one another. And that's, that's much needed right now. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my initial thoughts is let's be in the Word, let's be in prayer, and asking God, like, God, how would you have us be a part of bringing, bringing about change in, this, in that nation as well as our own? Yes. Amen. So now, Emily, um, how can people learn more about your uh, family's missionary in uh, Hope for Puerto Escondido? Um, so some ways that you guys can find out more about what we're doing is if you follow us on Instagram. Okay. You can go to Hope for Puerto Escondido or also my dad's Instagram, Ronnie Jones. Okay. And be able to see what we're doing, get updates. My dad also has a, a newsletter that he sends out, so you can email him at Ronnie at pemexico.com and ask to get the emails. He just thrown it out there. My dad writes some great newsletters. Awesome. I, I always enjoy reading them and has lots of pictures. Love the pictures. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, that's that's some of the – and also Facebook. You can go check out my dad's Facebook at Ronnie Jones and just see, see what's going on down there. I'll put the links to the email in this video. Yeah. But, yeah, thanks so much for having me on and – um, I would just ask um, your audience, just be praying um, mm-hmm. also down in Mexico for the effects of the coronavirus. It's, it's a lot of people are out of work mm-hmm. um, just due to not a lot of tourism right now. Yeah. So, and there are a lot of people that we know have been getting sick recently. Um, so just prayer that God would protect them. Amen. And also prayers for the youth ministry at Hope Chapel, yes. too, with this whole COVID pandemic. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Emily, for coming on the show. Yeah, you're welcome.
Anything else you want to say to the audience? What do I want to say to you guys? Um, let's, let's do God's work and not get distracted. Amen.